In this video we're going to be looking at impact loading and in particular we're going to be looking at two things. First of all we're going to be looking at impact forces and then we're going to be looking at impact energy. Now when we refer to impact forces what we're referring to is the force applied by an object as it strikes another object and when we refer to impact energy we're talking about the amount of energy that's absorbed by the surface upon impact. Now in brackets I've just made a note that when we're calculating impact forces we will be using a combination of Newton's second law and our equations of motion. And when we come to calculating impact energies the law of conservation of energy applies. So we have a diagram here in the bottom left hand corner and we have a mass m that's been lifted through a distance h. The mass m is 25 kilograms and the distance it's been raised through is 6.5 meters. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drop that object and it's going to strike the surface below. And in doing so, we have a second diagram in the center there. The material that's being impacted is going to deform. It's going to absorb the impact energy. So what we're basically saying here is that the object isn't going to rebound. It's going to be embedded into the material that it's being dropped onto. Now I've also made a note that the time of impact in this case is going to be 10 milliseconds. Well, milli is a thousand, therefore 10 milliseconds, 10 divided by a thousand is 0.01 seconds. So that's the time taken for the impact to occur. And what we mean more specifically by that impact time is the time taken for the object to decelerate once it comes into contact with the surface here. So let's begin by calculating our impact energy. Now, what we already know is that that object is going to have potential energy because it's been raised through a distance. And when we drop that object, the point when it impacts with the surface, all of that potential energy is going to be converted to impact energy. So what we can say is that the energy on impact is equal to the potential energy before the impact. Well, the potential energy contained in that object when it's lifted through a distance of 6.5 meters can be calculated because potential energy is mass times gravity times height, or in this case, 25 times 9.81 times 6.5. That's how much energy the object has once it's raised through a distance h. Therefore, the amount of energy it has is 1, 5, 9, 4.1 joules to one decimal place. We could also write that as 1.594 kilojoules. So because we know how much energy the object had when it was dropped, we now know how much energy is absorbed on impact. Now in order to work out the impact force in this first instance, we're going to use our impact time of 0.01 seconds. And we're going to use that information along with Newton's second law to calculate that force. Because we know from Newton's second law that force equals mass times acceleration. Well, in this case, we're going to have negative acceleration or deceleration. And the reason we're going to have deceleration is just before the point of impact, this object is going to have a velocity, and it will be our initial velocity, and after the impact has taken place, its final velocity is just going to be zero. The object is going to decelerate from a known velocity, u, down to a final velocity of zero meters per second. So what we need to determine is the velocity u just before impact. Now once again, we can use the law of conservation of energy, because what we know is the potential energy contained in the object before it's dropped is going to be converted to kinetic energy just before the impact. All of that energy is going to be converted to kinetic energy just before the impact. And we can input our equations. Potential energy is mass times gravity times height. And kinetic energy, usually we use a half mv squared, but our velocity in this case just before the impact is u. So I'm going to use a half mu squared. Now there's a number of different ways of solving this. Possibly the most simple way is we can divide each side of this equation by m. So we lose an m here and we lose an m here and we're left with gh equals a half u squared. Next I can multiply each side by 2 
I'll get u squared, a half times 2 is just 1, equals 2gh. And therefore, to get u on its own, I need to square root each side of that equation. So square root of 2gh. And doing that now, I get square root of 2 times 9.81 times 6.5 giving me a velocity u equal to 11.3 metres per second. So we now know the velocity just before impact is 11.3 metres per second. The velocity just after impact is 0 metres per second because the object's decelerating and all of that occurs in a time of 0.01 seconds. I'm just going to add that second velocity to my diagram. So here we have u equaling 11.3 metres per second. And now I'm going to clear some space so I can calculate that force. So applying Newton's second law, we know that the force that we're trying to calculate is the mass of the object times acceleration. Or in this case, it's going to be its deceleration. And what we can do is we can use our equations of motion to calculate that deceleration. A equals V minus U over T. That's one of our standard equations of motion. V is 0, U is 11.3, and T is 0 0.01 seconds, giving me an acceleration equal to minus 11.3 divided by 0 0.01, which is minus 1130 meters per second squared. Now finally I can calculate my force because force is mass times acceleration. Our mass is 25 and our acceleration will keep it as a negative, giving me a force equal to 28250 newtons or expressed in kilonewtons, that's 28.25 kilonewtons. Now the important thing to remember is that this is negative, and the reason it's negative, again referring to our diagram, is because that impact force opposes the original direction of motion. So originally our direction of motion was downwards, the force is acting upwards or opposing that. So that's an example of how we can use the impact time to calculate the force, Let's look at another example where we're going to use information about the deformation of the material to calculate that. So here we have a similar example, except this time we've not been given the impact time. Instead, we've been given this deflection, lowercase d. And what we can see here is that when the object has struck the surface, it's deformed the surface and it's become embedded. Now, in doing so, the impact energy has caused this deflection. And we can use this information to calculate the impact force. So the impact energy is going to be the same as in the previous example, where the impact energy was equal to the potential energy contained in the object before the collision. And we said that that was the mass times gravity times height, or 25 times 9.81 times 6.5. And we calculated that to equal 1594.1 joules. Now, the important thing that we need to realise here is that the impact energy is going to result in work being done on the surface. As this object has struck the surface, it's done work in order to deform the surface. So we have a force acting downwards that's caused a deflection D, and a force times a distance is work. Now work is also a form of energy. So in effect, what's happening here is the potential energy that was contained in the mass when it was lifted through a distance of 6.5 meters becomes our impact energy as the object strikes the surface. But then that impact energy is doing work in order to deform the surface. So once again, what we can say is that the work done on the surface during the deformation is equal to the potential energy that was contained in the object when it was lifted through the original distance. So the work done 
equals the force times that small deflection distance, which equals 1594.1. Well, we can rearrange that because if we know 1594.1 equals the thing we're trying to find, the force, times the deflection distance of 8 millimetres, then we're going to be able to calculate the impact force. Now it's important to know that 8 millimetres would need to be converted to metres. 8 millimetres divided by 1,000 is 0 0.008 metres. So 1594.1 equals F times 0 0.008. Therefore, the impact force F equals 1594.1 divided by 0.008, giving us an impact force this time equal to 199,266 newtons. Or we can express that in kilonewtons. We'll call that 199.3 kilonewtons. So in summary, in the first example, we had a material where we knew the time taken for the impact to occur. And from that, we was able to calculate the deceleration of the object and the force on impact. Now, in this second example, we didn't know the time. Instead, we knew the deflection or the deformation of the material. So we used the work done equaling the force times the distance to calculate the impact force. Now, you'll note that the two answers we've obtained are different. And the thing that would account for that is different materials. Different materials have different moduluses of rigidity, they have different hardnesses, and they have different properties. If we was to replace the material seen here with a softer material, then our deflection would increase and our impact time would also increase. So different materials will incur different impact forces based on the amount they deform. And what we see there is actually an example of how some of these material properties can be tested. Things such as the hardness and the toughness of the material can be tested in a similar way.